talking all morning about mm. this potential new deal. 50-50 chance, but there's hopes growing in Brussels and in Dublin that we are now finally in touching position of a deal. Would the SNP really vote that down and destroy it in the House of Commons? Uh, well, look, the proposals that are on the table from Boris Johnson and any likely amendment of them would not be acceptable to the SNP. They would take Scotland out of the EU out of the single market, out of the customs union, with all the damage that would do and against our will. And it's very clear that Boris Johnson envisages a much looser relationship in future with the EU than even Theresa May did. I mean, you don't hear Boris Johnson talk about protecting environmental right, rights yeah. or consumer rights or workers' rights. So we would be looking at a race to the bottom where priorities would be uh, to try to get trade deals with sure. the likes of Donald Trump. That's not acceptable to the but SNP. At the moment, the choice seems to be a deal, or no deal. That's not the and choice, this Andrew. is the deal. That, that's not the well, choice. Well, eventually it's going to be. Well, there's either a deal or there isn't a well, deal. Well, we have to work through these things, but if you fast forward to next weekend, that's not the choice. The Bain Act is the law of the land that says if there is no deal, there has to be a request for an extension. So there'll have to be a deal next year or whenever the Bain Act runs out. Eventually there'll have to be well, a deal. I, I and don't... it sounds like you're against any deal. Well, Basically. I'm not sure I'm giving you an exclusive here by saying I'm against Brexit. Yes, Scotland yes. voted against yes. Brexit. So I don't think that is the choice now or even in the future. If there is an extension, that opens the door uh, to a general election. Uh, it opens the door even to a second referendum. I don't think, and I certainly am not prepared as First Minister of Scotland, to accept the inevitability of Brexit. OK, well, you said let's fast forward to, to Saturday. <laughs> so let's fast forward okay. to Saturday. I don't know if you heard of Rebecca long Bailey, but she was suggesting that if a re second referendum was attached to any possible deal by Boris Johnson, that that might be an acceptable thing. If a referendum is part of this, would the SNP then vote for it? Well, look, I, I'm not going to speculate before we know what the actual choices will be next Saturday. Uh, we will not vote for a deal of the, the kind described by Boris Johnson. I've set out, I, I think it was on... Deal this, plus referendum. Well, let me just try and unpack this and answer your question uh, in, in detail and in all the different aspects of it. I think it was on this programme last year at the SNP conference, I said the SNP would back a second EU referendum and that did. remains yes. our position. But there is a question of the, the right and proper and, and frankly most deliverable sequence of events now. Over the past few weeks I have been of the view and I'm still of the view uh, the, the better sequence of events, uh, in principle and for practical reasons, is for the opposition to try to get rid of Boris Johnson in a vote of confidence, uh, to have uh, the extension secured and then have a general election as quickly as possible. Now, that remains my view, but I've also said we rule nothing open out. To, I mean, if there was an uh, people, so-called people's vote, floor, uh, vote on the floor of the House Commons, you'd be open to it. SMP I've very deliberately that. tried not to close down options. This Brexit fiasco is in such a mess, the implications and the consequences are so potentially damaging that I think any responsible leader wanting to do the right thing for the people they represent would keep all options open. But I've equally tried uh, to have the SNP try to lead and to guide the best ways forward. One of the practical uh, issues I think there is about having a referendum before the general election, we've seen how difficult it has been thus far impossible for the opposition to come together to unite behind a leader of an interim government that might be in office for a few days to secure an extension. If there is to be a government that legislates for a referendum, it has to be in office for a reasonable period of time. So it has to do other things. It has to govern. It might have to put through a budget. I just question well, whether it would be possible. I question whether it would be possible for the opposition to come together, which is why I think an election uh, where parties can seek a mandate for a second referendum is the better option. But I'm ruling nothing out because the circumstances okay, we're in is such that we have to keep all options open. That's interesting. Going ahead, there are two obvious possible outcomes. Outcome one, Boris Johnson <laughs> either gets his deal through or brings us out without a deal at some point. I understand about the Ben well, Act, but sure at, some, is, at some point. I, I don't think those are the only two options. Well, let's, well, let's <laughs> say option one is what he would regard and that part of the world would regard as a proper Brexit. We leave the EU. England, certainly, in its economy, diverges mm. in terms of regulations and in taxes. The SNP running Scotland would be in a very difficult position for a few years at least where you would be part of Brexit Britain. How would you cope with that? Well, firstly, I, and I don't want to overly labour this point, but I don't think 
the, the two options you've described are the only two options. The reason I am so well, determined to do everything I can to stop Brexit is because I think what you've just described there is damaging, not just for Scotland, but for the rest it, of the UK. It may be damaging, but it's plausible. But I'm just thinking plausible. a plausible so, future. How do you to deal with that? To answer that question, yeah. well, I, I think Scotland, uh, in these circumstances, uh, the argument for Scotland becoming independent is even stronger than it has been previously, so that we can decide our own relationship with the European Union. I would want us to be members of the European Union continue to be in the single market and the customs union and actually have a better foundation to build yes. economic success than we would have coming out of the EU. And we see today a poll in the Sunday Times shows that support for independence is rising and people actually think that option, an independent Scotland in the EU, would lead to us being more prosperous than the alternative. Absolutely. Um, as you, you know, work towards the referendum, fight the referendum campaign and then try to return to the EU as an independent country, that process takes quite a few years. In that period, you would not be able to stop Britain diverging radically from where we are well, in which, terms which, of regulations and taxes and so on. Which is the real danger, which is why, A, I will fight so hard against that option, uh, and B, why I will make the case for Scotland not to allow itself to be trapped in that kind of situation, uh, but instead yeah. to chart our own course as an independent country. I don't underestimate the dangers and the damage of a Boris Johnson-led government in a race to the bottom, prioritising trade deals with the likes of uh, Donald Trump, which is why I would like to see a vote of confidence to get him out of office in a general election that could hopefully see a, a different future. How long do you think it would take an independent Scotland to get back into the EU? Um, not very long. I'm not going to sit here and put a, a time scale on that because we would have to properly, responsibly, in a mature way, uh, have these discussions. But I speak to people in the European institutions and other member states regularly as part of my job as First Minister. I think there is a, a real appetite to see Scotland in the EU. I think there would be open arms for Scotland. And I don't think that is a process that would, uh, of necessity, take a particularly long period of time. Of course, there would the be Scottish options for okay. Scotland in the interim in terms of EFTA and sure. being in the single market. So, you know, we Good have options okay. there to put the interests of our country first. At the moment, our future is being dictated to us by a Westminster Tory government that we didn't vote for. Scotland has a 7% deficit, one of the worst, if not the worst, in Europe. Is that going to be a problem in those negotiations? Uh, Scotland's deficit is reducing. We saw in the most recent figures published, our onshore uh, revenues in particular are rising uh, faster than other parts of the UK. Scotland's economy is sound, strong, healthy. The biggest risk to Scotland's economy right now is a Brexit future. And, you know, imagine a, an independent... Let me ask you about another thing sure. uh, directly related mm -hmm. to that. You know, if uh, England leaves the EU, and pursues a different course in terms of tax and regulations and so on, which is the only reason for leaving the EU and therefore seems to be likely under the Conservatives, then you will have a very different regime south of the border and north of the border. And I don't see how you can avoid a serious border. Well, look, I don't want borders. It's not my no, choice. To, that, well, but, but again, we have to take these things step by step. I am not uh, the author of the Brexit policy. I'm opposed to the Brexit policy. It is not my choice to have policies that uh, result in borders. I don't want Scotland, and I don't see why Scotland but does you have, have to, to deal choose. with the world that's foisted and on I will, you in a sense. And I will, but what I'm not going to do is to try to speculate and answer questions on the basis of detail that we don't yet have and a scenario that we don't yet know the nature of. So I will always be frank and honest with people in Scotland about the choices I'm asking them to make. One of the things I am determined about is that the choice that Scotland will make on independence, just as it was in 2014, to, to be fair, will be a, an informed and a detailed one. We won't plaster lies on the side of a bus and cross good, our fingers good. and hope if, we if get away If we're going to be it. frank and honest, if England leaves the EU and pursues a different course and Scotland stays inside the EU and wants to pursue that course, then there has to be a well, border between Scotland and England. That is kind of that obvious. Question, and Let's be frank about I, it. I understand why, but that question had a number of ifs in it, and that's the point I am making. Yeah, we, we need agreed. to see how things uh, play out over the night and, and what the final relationship between the UK and the EU will be. I am not of the view that what, what you've described, what Boris Johnson wants, is an inevitability, and I will continue to argue against that. But as these, that picture clarifies, uh, I will be honest with the people of Scotland, but it, that opens a situation where Scotland's best interests depend on being independent and in charge of our own future. Uh, and I don't want borders. It is not my policies that so, are putting so you, borders you need, anywhere. you need that new referendum. Why haven't you asked for a Section 30 order? Because I'm putting legislation through the Scottish Parliament right now to put the rules and regulations in place. I've said uh, as recently as a few weeks ago that as that 
uh, legislation progresses, we will make that request for a Section 30 order. We see rising support for independence. We see rising support. Will, can I ask, for, will you ask me for, be asking for that order this year? Uh, yes. You're asking for that order next month? Uh, we will do it at an appropriate moment, uh, moment when the legislation is passing. It is likely to be over the next soon. matter of weeks. It is coming soon. Of course, coming we don't soon. yet know who uh, is likely to be in uh, Downing Street. The yes. situation is very fluid, and that's why I've taken the decision to do the preparations that are within our control here right now, and we're getting on with that. So what quite a lot of your own supporters don't understand is because under this process, um, uh, a Conservative government could refuse to allow you to well. run a referendum. Why don't you go for the so-called Plan B and say that if we win a big majority at the next election, or we will carry out our own informal well, referendum, you know, that will be enough. I've, What's the problem because, with it? Because the process we uh, undertake to choose our own future has to be capable of delivering independence. Now, you know, I've campaigned for independence all my life. If I thought there was a quicker way, an easier way, a plan B that would get us there quicker, I would have taken it by so now. What, is the problem? what we have to do is have a process that firstly allows us to demonstrate there is majority support in Scotland for independence. And secondly, we have to have a process that is legal and accepted. Otherwise, our independence will not be recognised, not, not just domestically you you in the a UK, Catalan problem, but across. Yeah. Well, Catalonia and our friends in Catalonia do demonstrate that you can have a referendum but not necessarily become independent. I'm in the business of uh, seeing Scotland become independent. Now, the easy, it would be easy for me and it would make my life easier in the short term just to tell my supporters what they want to right. hear. But I've watched Brexiteer leaders doing that uh, over the past three years and it doesn't end well. I have to deal in reality. I'm determined to lead my country to independence and that means doing it properly. Um, you've talked a lot about an election. Now, in that election, looking at the polls, it's very, very hard to tell what, what, what's going to happen. But one very, very plausible scenario is that Labour is the largest party but doesn't have an overall majority and has to look to other parties in order to be able to govern. Now, are you still in a position where you would not go to any kind of coalition yeah. with, with Labour? So you do a supply and favor, support. You might do a supply and support look, arrangement. We will not put the Tories into office. I don't favour coalitions. I'll say the same as I said in 2015 and 2017. We would favour a, a progressive type alliance. But I say this to Jeremy Corbyn or any Westminster leader uh, who's looking to the SNP uh, for support. If you don't accept Scotland's right to choose our own future at a time of our own choosing, don't even bother picking up the phone to me.